Guten Tag, my name is DMAT, and welcome to a very interesting video. This episode does mark the last of my Bechtrek in Time videos, as well as the final installment of my Zoo Light Trip 2021. But for our final time traveling adventure, we're back at the Dal Zoo to not only see the wildlife, but their zoo lights. So, let's get into what was the Dal Zoo like back in the winter of 2021. When we first entered, we got to see their lemurs out and about taking advantage of the sunlight. Next, we followed the old trail to their primate place. Here we saw the usual suspects, their beautiful male mandrill, as well as a pair of white cheek gibbons. An interesting fact about each is that the drill in the mandrill's name actually means baboon, given that they are a member of the baboon family. But that makes their name actually mean man baboon. Also, gibbons are known for their loud calls. However, to prepare for these calls, which are often used to declare their territory, the gibbons are known to actually warm up their voices, kind of like a singer. Going through their Asian section while the white-naped cranes were out, the tiger had an admittedly good excuse why it wasn't on display. Now we return to the best part of the Dal suit. In my opinion. If you see my last video here, you know exactly where we are. Most things in the Herpetarium haven't really changed, except that it seemed to have replaced the caiman lizard with a sailfin dragon. Otherwise, the building still retains its diverse collection and immersion, with lizards, snakes, and testudines of all sizes. One thing I also like is that they show the reptiles in all their beauty, trying to wipe away the harmful misconception people have against them, while also educating them on the threats that reptiles face in the wild. After the Herpetarium, we once again went through the sci-fi wormhole that is the tunnel. This time, the wall on the left, if you are going towards Africa, still has animals from the photo arc. The wall on the right has been dedicated to the women of science, including field biologists, lab researchers, and zookeepers. All in all, not much has changed in Africa since we last visited, besides maybe a couple new faces at the penguin pool. But we also saw their hippos, a first time viewing of their okapi right above the hippos, the judgmental clip springer, and their chimpanzee troop. Interesting fact I learned is that when their <clears throat> posteriors are inflamed like that, 
It actually means they are getting ready to breed. Don't ask me how that works. Moving on, next is their forest aviary, where we saw their white-faced whistling ducks, and the more prominent bird that day, the common shell duck, native to Europe and Asia. Oh, and parts of North Africa, here we go. These guys are native to a variety of wetland habitats all around Europe and Central Asia. The males are larger and have a bigger, more saturated bill. Furthermore, during the nesting season, they are known to steal burrows from rabbits and make them their own. One thing we touched on last time were their gorilla habitats. Fortunately, the research station was actually open, provided you wore a mask while inside. The interior of the station felt very modern, and not only could you see both the bachelor and family troops within the building, but the gorillas could also see each other through the glass. Within the building, we also got to talk to one of the keepers about the great apes. We learned that while the family group is meant to help continue the species in captivity, the bachelors are meant to permanently stay together due to them not having the best genetics. We also learned how playful the youngsters can be and how rough the bachelors can be, given that one of them had a clean cut hole above his eye. But don't fret for the big guy, as he got cleaned up and is behaving as if nothing happened. Trust me, these guys are built for that kind of combat. This habitat especially reminds me to appreciate how interesting our distant cousins are and how I could watch them all day. Unfortunately, we gotta move on and finish up the zoo with their giants of Africa. We made it just in time for one of their elephant keeper chats and got to learn a little more about the pachyderms. While I didn't get much other film of the plains habitats, I did get a substantial update on the lion cubs that we saw last time. And like all babies, they just had to get big since the last time we were here. They couldn't just stay babies forever. In all seriousness, it was cool to see the entire pride together, with dad taking it easy on the sidelines. As an ad bonus, something I enjoyed was that when you eat at Serengeti Grill, you can get a front row seat to their lions. Luckily, due to the warmer weather, they were taking advantage of the sun and chilling on the rocks. That's not some moron. Right in view of zoo patrons. that, you now have a better understanding of what the Dallas Zoo was like back in the winter of 2021. Cue the zoo lights!
This being the last Zoo Lights video of the year, like every visit, I was nothing short of pleased with the results. The Dallas Zoo mixes the lanterns that we saw in Oklahoma City with light shows built into the environment. They also blended the magical light-filled forests and tunnels with luminescent safaris. The journey takes your car behind the scenes and also through the normal zoo paths. Another part that I forgot to film was their Christmas village, complete with more lights, hot cocoa, and more. But with that, I think we're done here. This does not only conclude the Zoo Lights Trip 2021, but also my What Was It Like series that I started back in the summer. I hope you all enjoyed not only this video, but also this aspect of Backtrack as a whole. Also, if you haven't noticed, I've been putting all the dedicated Christmas light videos on a playlist, so that if you like them and the music, consider putting them on repeat on a display this holiday. It not only helps the channel, but also helps show everyone what these zoos have to offer. And with that, I think we're really done here. I hope you enjoyed the video and will consider liking and subscribing to the channel, as well as following us on our other social media platforms. Link tree in the description below. And share this video out to anyone who likes zoo lights, herpetariums, gorillas, lions, or zoos and animals in general. I thank you all for watching, and remember, always be prepared, do good daily, and love nature. For your life is a canvas, and you have the brush. Auf Zane.